Hey everyone, I am joined by my friend Laura Dawson, who is a multi-passionate entrepreneur. I am not going to spill any secrets and tell you what she does. I'm going to leave that all to her, but she is truly amazing and I don't know how she has the time to do all of this stuff, but it is incredible. So Laura, thank you so much for joining me tonight and having a chat. I'm so excited to chat all things passion and purpose with you. Thanks for having me. I'm super excited about it. Okay. The big, the big reveal. <laughs> Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself and everything you do? I want to hear it all. <laughs> oh, sure. I wrote all these down and then in reflection was like, oh God, I should take a holiday. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm Laura. I uh, initially have two small businesses, um, mostly focused around children. So I have one that's a children's party entertainment company called Glitter Bomb Parties. And then the second I have is that I'm one third of the Beanies, who are the, um, a kids band. We say we're kind of like the Wiggles. I feel like we're putting ourselves in a good category there. Yeah. Um, but we really specialize in non-visual entertainment for children. So we actually have a podcast um, that won podcast of the year oh, this yeah. year, which is very exciting. <laughs> um, but we also do like live shows and music for kids. Um, so those are the two small businesses. Yep. <laughs> And I, I work nine to five. Um, I manage a now we lo we work location um, in the Sydney CBD, which is where Casey and I met um, <laughs> about six months ago um, when she was working here too. Mm -hmm. um, and then on the side, I also perform um, and sing for corporate gigs and events. I know the list just seems to go on and on. <laughs> I'm just, I'm um, those are the main things. Those are the main things. <laughs> So like you said before, um, I worked with you and that's how I know you. And still to this day, uh, I talk about you and how in awe I am of you and how you can get all of this done in your life and how you manage it all. Uh, how in the world do you have the energy? Is there like a secret pill that I don't know about? <laughs> well, I love this question because um, the fact that someone thinks I do it with ease is just hilarious. Um, I always love that little uh, analogy of um, the duck floating on the water and on the surface, it looks real calm. And then underneath it's little legs are just like <laughs> frantically. <laughs> um, but I guess, I guess it comes down to efficiency. I try really hard to be an efficient person and be as efficient and um, with my time and my energy. Um, I also don't think that at this point in time, I'm ever going to be as fit or as capable or as devoid of responsibility as I am right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, I even look back on when I was younger and didn't have rent and bills and be like, damn, I could have done so much more with my time. And that like, this is as fit and capable as I'm ever going to be. So there's might as well take advantage of it now. I mean, there's the obvious things I try to eat healthy and I try to stay in and exercise and make sure I get enough sleep and things like that. Um, but really it's just about recognizing that um, you're never going to have as much energy as you have right now. Yeah. It's only, you're only going to get tired up. So yeah. you might as well take advantage of it. Yeah. And I guess the sky's the limit. Like if you can make it work, yeah. then why not give it all a go and, and try and reach for the stars and take it as far as you can? Absolutely. Absolutely. Why, why, why would you stop? Yeah. So um, I guess there's a misconception that, you know, all of us have to just pick one thing and that's our career for the rest of the li our lives. And the thing that I love about you the most is, you know, you're just, you're kind of challenging that stereotype and you have two businesses and you're, you're actually really successful, like with musical theater and, and all of that stuff as well. Um, do you think it is possible to manage our energy over multiple businesses and have that kind of, you know, multiple career pathway? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I've, I've never really thought that you had to kind of pick one's lane and stick to it. Um, I mean, I've been performing since I was a kid. And so I was really used to going from school and being at math class to half an hour later being at rehearsals or being at a gig or being at a show or yeah. being at dance class. And so I was kind of, maybe that just came naturally because I've been doing it for so long yeah. to, to switch and go from an important meeting to dressing up as Elsa. Like it's, it's, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think um, you have to, I mean, I mean, it's not all, it's not all sun and roses, you know, mm -hmm. like you, you do have to be okay with not having time to binge on Netflix or yeah. keeping up with The Bachelor or having sleep-ins or going to the movies. Like it's not, it's not always easy at all. Yeah. And I will be the first to admit that. But, but I think in five, 10 years time, or even like a week's time, you won't remember that sleep-in mm -hmm. and you won't remember watching that episode of The Bachelor, but you'll probably be 
a little more ahead in your business than you would have been if you had done that. Yeah. Um, so I always think when I'm, when people ask why I do so many things and they're like, why, why wouldn't I? I have as many hours in the day as Beyonce. I make the most. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I guess it's something that I always come back to, you know, like, little sacrifices may you know Mm. they might they they're easy to do but over the long run can save you you know you you don't watch a netflix episode and actually just put an hour into your business or into a passion or a hobby and then you're one hour closer to where you want to be instead of just sitting watching netflix feeling sorry for yourself you know you can make those little sacrifices and and slowly make those steps towards your bigger dream absolutely and that takes practice too if you're not used to being busy or or giving up those things just just try it once just watch one episode of something and then promise yourself and do little promises or little rewards that works really well for me yeah that if I if I get this done in this amount of time I get this reward because I'm just a rewards based person (laughs) and so even just giving if giving myself that reward and then giving myself the praise for completing that task is invaluable and if you can get used to getting into that rhythm it's amazing how much you can get done yeah for sure um do you have any like specific tips or ways you kind of schedule all of these you know projects and businesses do you you know are you a big scheduler do you do you have like a day planner how does it all come together I yeah guess? <laughs> my my calendar on my phone is my best friend yeah. if it's not in the calendar it's not happening because <laughs> I just I don't have enough room in my brain to remember all those things. And so it takes, I I know I'm pretty regimented in that I will always put something in my calendar and my calendar syncs to my work calendar. So there's never any discrepancies there. Yeah. Um, And so if it's not in my calendar, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Um, And it it means that I don't have to rely on myself and my own memory and be stressed about forgetting things. Yeah. I know that it's in there and past Laura has taken care of it um, and that I'm where I need to be and when. Yeah. Um, but I also really love apps. Yeah. I don't know. I know you know this about me <laughs> from working together, but I am big on efficiency apps. If I can find an app that will order my lunch for me mm-hmm. or do my taxes, <laughs> I have found both. Um, I will I will take that. So I have a, for example, I have an app that I use for Glitterbomb that's connected to my business bank account. And every time I make a purchase on that bank account, um, it automatically enters it in that app if I've made a purchase like that before it's called QuickBooks by the way yeah um if I've made a purchase like that before it'll automatically categorize it into the category that I've already set up yeah um it it puts payments in there so I've got an automatic profit and loss that I can always check in with and see where I'm at it tracks my kilometers in my car and I can means I don't have to log for tax at the end of the year so things like that Mm. that can optimize your hours and um, make your days a bit easier and you can spend your time doing the things that you need your brain to do rather yeah. than automatic things. Yeah. A gold. For sure. If they take half an hour to set up, but take you, you know, hours off your week, then just do it. Yeah. <laughs> I think as yeah. well for me, like, um, I'll get sometimes get so excited, like an idea will come up or someone will reach out to me for like a podcast and I'll just get so excited about it and schedule it or like agree with them to a time. And then when I actually go and look into my schedule, I'm like, oh, okay, like this actually can't happen at this time. And it just, mm. you know, like it just keeps you in check when you're like, you might be super excited to do something, but you know, your, your schedule's like, well, no, it's not practical. You know, you need to, <laughs> you need to like work yeah. with your, your schedule here. Otherwise you just get Absolutely. completely out of control, double book yourself. Mm-hmm. And having it all in one place is yeah. the most, I mean, like I know iPhone calendars aren't the sexiest <laughs> like way of planning. And I know people are really into like, beautiful day planners and things like that and I wish I could but Mm -hmm. I'm not always guaranteed to have my day planner with me and so I have just learned that that's I'll always have my phone yeah I will always be able to check and that's probably the most efficient way I found to do it yeah awesome um I'm gonna ask you a tough question now uh do you have a favorite between all your multi passions um is there kind of a sneaky favorite (laughs) this is like the worst question ever (laughs) (laughs) I read it I was like no it's like picking your favorite child yeah. um I, look all of them have like amazing positives and mm-hmm. I think eventually one of them will just emerge as the dominant thing that I'm gonna have to just take an opportunity or take something that comes my way yeah. and spend more time on yeah. um but at this point I think I'm just gonna let fate take care of that yeah and figure that out when it comes but at the moment I think none of them could exist without the other yeah so 
my day job couldn't support what I'm doing outside of work. And yeah. if I didn't have all the experience with kids with beanies, I probably wouldn't have started Glitter Bomb. Mm-hmm. And in, in that, if I wasn't doing kids entertainment, I wouldn't have started Beanies. And so they all kind of like mesh are a happy little family mm-hmm. at the moment. Yeah. And I think eventually maybe something will push one ahead. But yeah. At the moment, they're just a happy little juggling. <laughs> so I guess this kind of answers this question though. Um, you know, do any of them kind of get pushed to the back burner or, you know, like you you focus more on, on beanies and then like something else slips or have you kind of, mm. have you got it down to like a fine art, art now between like managing them all? I think I've gotten pretty good at holding all the balls in the air, but there's, yeah. there's always times when one thing takes priority. Yeah. So for example, we were just talking about the, the company I work for, 9 to 5, just went through this huge acquisition and integration. So all the other things in my life just had to like be put on pause for a couple of weeks and yeah. I couldn't um, do any business development. But I think the most important thing, if you're going to commit to multiple businesses or multiple passions, is that you don't overcommit yourself. Yeah. So I will make sure that I always have time to respond to urgent inquiries or things that go wrong or yeah initial inquiries which are really important but I might just not have time to do that like extra business development or yeah. things like that um so always leave yourself wiggle room yeah um I've definitely been guilty of not doing that before <laughs> and it's bit me in the bum so yeah. that's probably the biggest biggest advice I can give give if you're gonna pursue many things at once mm-hmm. is that don't commit yourself to the minute yeah because things will go wrong yeah. always yeah <laughs> things will always totally <laughs> yeah. and I guess just be realistic too I mean obviously yeah. you know dream big and have these big plans and everything but you know understand your circumstances and and what your life environment may be at the time you know you work full time mm. and so like you know you've got to understand that like you know nine to five Monday to Friday is is blocked out like there's nothing more mm. that you can do so you've just got to work with what you've got absolutely and and managing your time efficiently will help that but definitely give yourself wiggle room even if you think you've planned down to the minute if you plan down to the minute then you haven't given yourself enough time yeah (laughs) exactly (laughs) um so a lot of people with multiple passions kind of you know find it hard to stay focused um do you have like a a big life vision in mind that encompasses all these passions and, and is kind of a driving force for you to keep moving forward I wouldn't say I kind of have like an end goal of a, a job or a business that I think is going to be perfect and fulfill all my passions. I think I've been pretty lucky that I've always been quite stern in that I only try to work in fields that I'm really passionate about. Yeah. And so I, I just think life's too short to be stuck at a job you don't like. I, I think there's always something out there that you're going to be more passionate about and, and find it and yeah. then do it. Yeah. So I think since starting working on the businesses that I'm in now, I don't think it's ever felt like a chore Mm -hmm. to keep working or to stay focused on an end goal. But I think what all of the things I do have in common is that it's keeping people and making people happy and giving them nice experiences that they're going to remember. So Mm -hmm. I can't imagine whatever, whatever the end goal ends up being wouldn't include that. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, In a way, do you think it could be detrimental to be multi-passionate because you can't put all your focus and attention into like one specific thing? Um, I don't think so. I think, again, it goes back to not over committing yourself. Yeah. Um, but I think if you're a natural multitasker, yeah. why wouldn't you build a business or two yeah. <laughs> in the background yeah. while you're still able to pay rent and enjoy life without any stress? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it actually puts you in a, a better position sometimes because you can back the business decisions that you're making financially if you need to. Yeah. Um, it gives you a bit of that freedom without being like, okay, well, if I make this business decision, I can't make rent. Yeah. So if you're a natural multitasker, I don't actually think, sometimes I think it would be, it's more beneficial to kind of keep more ball, balls rolling until something can really sustain you. Yeah. Um, and you decide which which business is going to be more abundant for your life. Yeah. I have been listening to your podcast and <laughs> using the word abundance yeah. all the time. Yes. Um, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, then, and I mean, when you do decide you, on what is going to be the most abundant thing to your life, mm-hmm. then you've already spent a year or two building it and yeah. growing it and learning about it and you're ahead Ready of the game. Go. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Um, what opportunities have come your way from, you know, all of your experiences and passions? So many. Um, I find that almost all the opportunities that come my way have been from asking questions. Yeah. So being comfortable talking to people on a human level. Mm-hmm. Um, I think at work sometimes we get in this routine of being like really professional all the time, but sometimes some of the best opportunities is just being like, 
what up? Yeah, just <laughs> um, I mean, in the co-working space, I manage the amount of times just asking like, oh, how old are your kids? Like, what are their names? Like, what are they like? Has ended up in new listeners of the podcast or them yeah. coming to shows or like a referral for a party booking. It's just, it's amazing that there's opportunities everywhere. Yeah. And you just have to, you can't be afraid to ask for them. And then if you don't, the answer's always no. Yeah. So talking to people and being around people and asking the question has always led me to opportunity, always. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, what kind of advice would you give to, say, a listener who, you know, is multi-passionate and has a lot of, you know, ways that they would like to take their life but feels, I guess, pressure to maybe just pick one and, and run with that one? Mm-hmm. I don't think there's any rules that say you have to kind of categorize yourself as one profession. Yeah. Um, I I joke with people at my day job all the time that I live this double life (laughs) as a princess and they think it's funny. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I go from having very serious meetings sometimes during the day to being Elsa and (laughs) let it go with snow and sparkles on the weekend. And like, I think that's cool. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and a lot of people do. A lot of people do. I don't think anyone would ever be like, you're a doctor and a wizard. Like, yeah. that doesn't check out, you know? So, <laughs> I don't think anyone would find that cool. I don't think anyone should be under, under pressure to categorize themselves. Mm-hmm. And I know we get in the habit of doing that, putting ourselves in a category. And when everyone, when you meet someone, they are, what do you do? And so you you find you want to have a good answer to that but sometimes four answers is cool too yeah exactly I feel like people feel so pressured to be like you know when someone asks you what do you do to be like I do x like no say a hundred things say everything that you love to do and and say it and be proud of it and just rock it absolutely completely agree um so what do you like to do in your very very small amount of free time (laughs) Uh, so I love performing in musicals in kind of like an amateur capacity that makes me really happy yeah um, I always say that's like my soul food if, yeah. I, if I feel a bit like empty in my soul that I'll go and do a production or a role that I really want to do mm-hmm. and will make me happy yeah and then I also have a dog that I'm completely obsessed yes. with so I just mainly spend time staring at him yeah that's pretty much why I asked this question because it's like because <laughs> you knew how much I yeah, love my dog he's literally the cutest little thing <laughs> He is. He's so beautiful. We actually found out at the vet yesterday that he's um, two kilos fatter than he should be. So I'm going to need to spend, carve some time out in my diary to make sure he gets some more exercise. Yeah. <laughs> or I'm just fattening him up because I think it's cute, yeah, by the way. I know. It's too hard to resist when they're like looking at you, like wagging their tail. You're like, oh, go oh, on. You can have a little bit. So fluffy and beautiful. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, what? Have, oh, God, I've lost my next question. Um, <laughs> getting distracted by the dog <laughs> how important is it for you to kind of find a little bit of free time and, and just take a little bit of time for yourself so important and I I'm not entirely I'm not the best person at um, recognizing when I need that time yeah. away so luckily my partner's very good at recognizing when I need that time right. away and he'll suggest that I need to chill or go to suggest we go to dinner or go to a show or something Mm -hmm. um but a lot of the time I feel more at ease when I'm busy yeah some I I think it's true for a lot of people that they um particularly people who are driven Mm -hmm. and passionate and want to build something yeah sometimes being bored is is unsettling yeah um so I think it's important to give yourself that time but also don't feel guilty if you want to work yeah like and there's a lot of people that are like, don't you want to just go to the movies and do that? I'm like, actually, I kind of would, I want to go home at work. Yeah. And I feel good about that decision. Yeah. yeah. It's funny that you bring that up actually, because for most of my life until kind of the Real Her Project came into play, I didn't really have like a certain passion or anything to focus myself on. And I would just always be like, oh, well, I'm introverted. So I just need to go home and like watch Netflix because that's what an introverted person does. But inside me, I always felt like something was missing. Like it wasn't right. Like, yeah, I'm at home and I'm just like chilling, but I felt like I I always wanted something to do. And, mm-hmm. and I think it's when you actually find what it is that you love to do and, and you're so 
uh, like overwhelmed with, you know, or just happy to put that time and energy into it, then it, it, it doesn't really feel like work, even if it's stressful or you've got, you know, a lot of stuff to do. You do, you would rather just go home and do that instead of putting on the TV or, you know, sometimes I have to literally force myself to just like stop and like go for a walk or, or just chill yeah. out or you, like, it sounds horrible, but like go up and like, just talk to your family and, and stay off your phone. And, you know, like it, it's, it almost gets to a point where you just love what you're doing that it doesn't feel like work, I guess. Absolutely. And how cool is it to find that thing? Like, yeah. I feel like a lot of people don't find that thing. And if you have, yeah. don't feel guilty yeah. for working at it yeah. at all. Um, I, I definitely believe in self-care, but I also believe in the hustle. Yeah, <laughs> very sure. much. That if you want to hustle and you're building something awesome, do it. Yeah, definitely. Um, that question kind of raised another question for me, though. In this <laughs> process of you, you know, kind of you know, opening these businesses and founding these businesses and then working full time. Have you ever had experiences with people in your life who potentially don't understand the fact that you need to work all the time? I mean, I know you work Monday to Friday and then you do everything else on the weekends or at nights. And have you ever had people in your life that are like, why can't you come out for, for Friday night drinks? Or why can't you see me on the weekend? Or, you know, and if so, how have you kind of dealt with that? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think I've been very lucky in that the people closest to me um, support me yeah. 110%. I mean, my closest friends, sometimes when I went overseas recently, some of them dropped some costumes off for me mm. or um, managed to put out a fire for a party, not a literal fire, <laughs> but a metaphorical fire <laughs> at a party when I wasn't there. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty lucky. And I mean, like one of my best friends is actually in the beanies, yeah. which makes me that a lot easier yeah. as well. Um, but there's definitely times where I'm not going to lie, my relationship has suffered yeah. or I haven't been able to see my family as much as I would like. Mm -hmm. um, and I will always, um, you know, apologize for that and, and be totally open and say that I'm like work just had to come first and I'll always try and make it up to them. So mm -hmm. there is like, again, there's sacrifices. It's not all rosies and daisies and rainbows all the yeah. time. Yeah. You do have to make sacrifices. You just have to decide whether or not for you, that's worth it. And that's something that the people around you are going to support. And there's times where you have to switch it off. Yeah. There's times where you have to say, no, I know I have to work, but this is more important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, luckily I'm the people around me are super, super supportive. Yeah. There are different, I mean, like I still get at work, people will be like, aren't you tired? Aren't you like, don't you need a rest? And I'm yeah. like, no. no. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. I'm fine. Yeah. yeah. It's so, it is actually so important to have people that, that get it and get the vision and understand it and, you know, realize, you know, I'm sorry, like I'm, I've got to cancel, like I've got something's popped up. Like it's just, yeah. it's so good to have those people that, yeah, you might not see all the time, but you know, they get it and they're, they're still rooting for you. They're still, you know, in your corner, whether, you, whether you can actually give them that, that attention all the time, you hope that in, you know, one day you will be able to return the, the, all the missed calls or the, you know, the, the missed lunch dates or whatever it is like, you know, one day you'll be able to pay that favor back for them being so supportive during the kind of hustle and grind phase. Absolutely. And I think if you are hustling and that's, that's a thing that is a part of your life, then sometimes I'm all about the unex unexpected kindness. Yeah. I think that unexpected kindness is just like a magical thing that changes people. So if you are sitting on the bus and you think, God, my friend has been so wonderful to me this week. Um, I haven't really spoken to her, but she's liked all my Instagram posts and she's really been supportive of the business and things like that. Just in that moment, send them a message yeah. unexpected yeah. and just give them a little bit of kindness right then and there. When you think of it, mm -hmm. that like that makes the world of difference. Even if you can't be accessible 24 seven or you haven't responded to their last message about dinner or something like that. Yeah. I mean, respond to that. Yeah. But also <laughs> like in the, in that moment, unexpected kindness can really keep relationships together and just remind people that they are, important yeah and while you might not be able to reply then and there that they are definitely in front of your mind yeah for sure I love that good tip <laughs> um so do you have any resources that you can recommend for someone who is multi-passionate like yourself yeah so back to more practical things we've got to be there again. yeah we did that <laughs> I always do um, yeah. <laughs> um so I think those those efficiency apps I talked about so like I'm addicted to QuickBooks. I think he's awesome if you're running a small business. Um, I think the app subscription is like six bucks mm -hmm. and it was the one that has all the tracking and everything. Um, I'm a big fan of MealPal, which 
um, orders your lunch for you and gives you a discount and then you go and it's already ready. Things like that that yeah. can really improve efficiency. Yep. Um, and I think it's also really important to learn how to value your time. Yeah. So learning what things are actually going to be valuable for you to spend your time on and what things you can outsource. Yeah. Um, so I know this might be like a totally unpopular opinion, mm -hmm. but I, um, I got a cleaner mm -hmm. like two years ago and it's the best decision I have ever made in my life. Yeah. She's wonderful. Mm -hmm. And she, it's like 50 bucks a fortnight, but it, it's like three hours. Cause I would definitely procrastinate on that. <laughs> yeah. Three hours of my week sometimes yeah. that, are taken care of me and I don't have to stress about. I think that's like the best 50 bucks a fortnight you can spend. So finding things that work for you yeah. like that and valuing your time, yeah. I think can make the absolute world of difference. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I literally just spent hours this afternoon cleaning up because I just let it like <laughs> pile up and it just gets to a point where you're like, well, <laughs> this is disgusting now. Like, and then yeah, you're exactly. wasting so much time. Totally. And she's way better than I'm yeah. ever gonna be at cleaning things. Exactly. Like, I do it. I'm just way better. <laughs> it's a it's a better situation for everybody. Yeah. So I mean I mean things like that sometimes seem like a luxury. Yeah. But if you think about twenty five dollars a week for that amount of time and stress, yeah. I think it's so worth it. I don't think it's a luxury things like that are a luxury at all. Yeah, for sure. Um, so how can the listeners number one get in contact with you and then kind of follow along on the business the businesses as well? Yeah, I mean, like, pick an email, yeah. any email. Um, <laughs> Even just trying to get in contact with you, I'm like, uh, so how, which email do you want me to use? So I think, I think the easiest way of, as a holistic thing would probably just to be shoot me a message on Instagram. Yep. Um, my handle is Laura underscore Kate Dawson. Yep. Um, and then on my, my um, kind of Laura handle, I have the handles for all my different projects. Yeah. So Beanie's on there, Glitter Bombs on there. Um, Gravity, which is how we work, is on there as well. And slide right into my DMs. <laughs> I am always happy to chat. I'm always happy to answer questions. Um, I'll send you some unexpected kindness. Yeah. Um, and you just started Insta storying. So it's just like amazing. I know. <laughs> Casey has inspired me to Insta story. I was Insta storying, but not to my full potential. And then I went overseas. <laughs> went overseas, listened to a podcast on my flight over, and ended up doing a little. I wouldn't call it a vlog, but yeah. it's like three steps before a vlog yeah, of, of my travel. So, and it was very well received. Yeah. So there you go. If, her project, giving out the good tips. And if anyone else hasn't done it yet, then get on it. <laughs> yes, it was. And it seems, it does seem kind of weird talking to your phone yeah. down the street and people give you weird looks, but um, it it's doesn't also take long. Too. The yeah. amount of, yeah, totally. <laughs> I don't care now. But, <laughs> um, but the amount of people that, message me like people from school or just like people from my old work life um mm. engaging in those was crazy yeah it's crazy awesome um okay so final question um what advice would you give to your younger self this is after the pick a favorite business this was definitely the hardest question <laughs> yeah. um and i think it's probably because all the advice i would give myself is probably things that i'm still working on mm -hmm. so it's like maybe i'm not old enough to give advice <laughs> just yet um, but i think I think learning to say no more often yeah. um, was a big thing for me. I, um, as I said, all the things I do is about making people happy. So I mm -hmm. aim to please, yeah. I aim to say yes mm -hmm. and um, make other people's lives easier yeah. and take on the burden myself. Yeah. So learning to say no more often was definitely a big thing that I'm still working on. Mm -hmm. um, and then having more courage to ask questions and ask for what you want, whether it be the, the job you want or the role you want or the uni you'd rather go to or um, anything, just Ask, if you don't ask the question, the answer is always no. And that, that mindset really kind of changed the way I, I went about things. And don't stress so much. Yeah. There are so many stress about in the world. Mm -hmm. Like you, the life is much simpler if you just stress about the things you actually need to stress about. Yeah. And nine times out of 10, the things you stress about don't end up happening anyway. So it's not worth totally, it. Totally. <laughs> totally. Having a bit of like self-awareness of stress mm. is it's a crazy powerful thing. If you can, if you can get a hold of, of being like, is this actually going to be an issue for me? Do I really need to stress about it and then put it to the side? Yeah. Um, getting a hold of that is pretty life changing. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, I think that's a nice way to kind of wrap it up. <laughs> Thank you so much for chatting with me. I think honestly, I do think you're just such an admirable person for someone that's young and, you know, wants to do a lot of things, doesn't know how to bring it all together. So um, I think anyone who's listening that's multi-passionate is going to probably slide right into your DMs very soon. <laughs> slide right in there. <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Laura. Thank you for chatting with me and I hope you have a good night. You too. Thanks, Casey.